Have you ever thought about eelgrass? Probably not. Do you know what eelgrass even is? I didn't. Come along with me on a slimy eelgrass ride. It'll be cool. Eelgrass is an underwater uh, grass. So just like the grass that's on your lawn, only it spends its entire life cycle underwater. This is a really cool plant. These are some of the most amazing plants that grow in the ocean. And it's a really critical ecosystem. So they create critical habitat for crabs, clams, small fish that then attract larger fish and create a balance for the system. It serves another function that the root system of the grass itself stabilizes the seabed and prevents erosion of sediment from the seabed itself. So it has these two um, ecosystem services. They thrive in the stinkiest, salt, most sulfide-rich mud you could imagine and they just love it. So eel grasses are really sensitive, they're quite vulnerable to stresses in the environment. And, and one of those stresses is temperature. And the eel grass in the Chesapeake Bay are actually at the limit of their thermal stress. And each summer we see the water in the bay getting warmer. And the problem with warmer temperature is that seagrass photosynthesizes, it uses the sun's energy um, to grow, but it also respires just like we do. And when temperatures increase, they actually respire more than they can photosynthesize. So they can't photosynthesize enough to overcome the high temperature stress, and that's why they die back. With uh, increasing turbidity and, and cloudiness in the water in the Chesapeake Bay, the light levels have decreased, and that has caused us to lose about 95% of our historic seagrass habitat in the bay. So just like in the movie Finding Nemo, he uses a sea anemone for his house to protect him, and eelgrass is that home for our animals here. So we really need those grasses in order to protect those small animals as they're growing and thriving. It's a shame that 95% of our eel grasses are gone. We gotta fix it. Two main goals we're trying to accomplish with this research. One is to understand how eel grass are gonna respond to climate change in the next century and whether or not the events or the changes that are gonna happen in the Chesapeake Bay system are gonna be such that eel grass will be able to survive. The other thing from a fundamental scientific question, we're trying to understand why seagrasses are responding to carbon dioxide increases like they are in the first place. Are you crazy? You're going to watch grass grow? What you see behind you is a uh, essentially a climate research facility that we constructed here on site with our partners Old Dominion University. Uh, we did this for several reasons. One is uh, we wanted an ideal place to be able to grow eelgrass in some uh, experimental conditions. Uh, we had the perfect location with Owls Creek right here behind us. The water was the perfect salinity. We needed to be outside as well, so we got sunlight onto the eelgrass. So this was just the perfect location for this partnership. I think it's a great way for us to see how our choices impact the environment around us. Um, when we do things in our everyday lives, like um, driving our cars or powering our houses, um, we are changing the way our climate and our ocean is. So when we burn fossil fuels like coal, oil, and gas, we're adding carbon dioxide to the atmosphere and it's creating a blanket-like effect around our earth. It's warming it up and also carbon dioxide is absorbing into our ocean and that's changing the chemistry of the ocean. Well, our research will have direct applications to help predict how much light the seagrasses require to survive and therefore how much improvement in water clarity we need to uh, in, impose on the base system in order to get seagrasses to grow back to the depths that we want them to grow to. This is a great opportunity for us to be able to talk to our visitors about climate change. We can actually show them research that's going on to find out how habitats like eelgrass beds are going to be impacted by changing temperatures um, and changing pH levels in our nearby waterways. I would like for my research to be able to impact people. I want you to be able to go home and say, hey, I learned about this really cool thing called seagrass that you may never have even heard about before. And to understand that it's a really integral part of the Chesapeake Bay environment and that we need to do everything that we can in order to protect it. Man, these guys are really into eelgrass. Who'd have thought that a tiny blade of grass could have such a huge impact on our environment? We're still learning how climate change is going to impact eelgrass and other vital habitats in the Chesapeake Bay. 
but there are things that you can help do to reduce your energy usage that will benefit all of us. Organize a walk to school day in your community or a no idle zone for buses and cars. Challenge your family and friends to be more energy efficient at home and at work. Support green businesses and renewable energy initiatives in your community. Thanks so much for joining us on the Eelgrass journey.